This module on the SP5 uh, Leica confocal training, uh, this is in addition to the basic module, which you should have seen prior to this, this is a module for multicolor imaging of a sample. So I'm not going to go through the introduction and the startup of the software. I'm going to just continue on from a base knowledge of the basic use of a single channel acquisition of this software. So to start with, we're going to choose from a multi-channel setting. Uh, there's plenty of those available on here, but custom ones can be made. And I'm going to choose any uh, two-color image. In this case, I'm interested in um, FITC and Alexa 594. And what you're going to see now is that two lasers are now being turned on, the 561 laser and the 488 laser. And these uh, go through the beam path across the AOBS to the specimen and the fluorescent light is now going to be gated to two photon multiplier tubes. And so there's going to be two active PMTs. And we're going to make sure that our settings are correct for this. So we have to make sure that when we're looking in multi-channel imaging that our gate that we select for our fluorophore does not extend out too far past the laser line. Now the AOBS We'll control for some of this, but in addition, we want to make sure that our gate does not extend past either of these uh, excitation laser lights. In addition, depending on the fluorophores, we want to make sure that our gate is not too close to the spectral overlap between two potential fluorophores so that we can have a distinct signal. So I'm going to set these two gates approximately at, at these widths to start with. PMT4 has the, not the right color, so I'm going to change that to magenta. And uh, the two PMTs are active. Now, in addition to the colors that you can see uh, by fluorescence imaging, there's also the ability to turn on uh, DIC channels to have an additional channel of imaging. And this is what's been turned on in this case. Some people like to use this by default because what it allows you to do is always have the DIC or bright field image in with your fluorescence images should you require them in the future. Uh, because if you find out in the future that you do require that channel but you don't have that information, you're going to have to redo your experiments. Once we have our channel set up into place with our excited light, our emission light, our gates in the correct position, the right colors that we want and all the channels activated, we're then going to look and do a quick live scan across those channels and what you can see here is our preliminary data. So in our preliminary data shows that in our green, in our green channel we do have signal. If we switch over to the red channel uh, it looks like our gain is not high enough so we will turn up the gain and we may need to turn up the laser light and in the third channel which is our DIC channel the gain has been set to zero, so we'll turn the gain up. Now you have to remember in the DIC, you don't need much gain in order to see an image. And we're gonna press live and see what we get. Okay, so this is better. Um, there's a lookup table here on the DIC I don't like, so I'm gonna change that to just grayscale. So what you can see from this multi-channel image is that our red is set far too high on gain. So we're going to take just that channel, which means we're going to click on the channel. Now our gain settings will only affect that channel, and we're going to commence a live scan. And what I'm going to do is turn down the gain on the red channel. Which still looks far too high, so I'm going to have to turn down the laser line considerably. That's in the linear, so that, that's in the linear range. I'm going to switch over to the green channel now and turn up that gain slightly. But again, keeping it within the dynamic range. And then I'm finally going to adjust the DIC channel and turn up the gain there. Uh, so once I'm happy with these settings, I'll then switch to the color settings and press capture image. 
And now I'm, interest, I'm going to be interested in a subregion, which means only a subpart of this image. Press in, zoom in. Where the region of interest box appears, I'm going to take this region of interest and do one capture image. And it looks like I'm going to have to adjust the DIC settings somewhat, probably for less gain. So once we visualize the independent channels, there's many ways to look at this. You can just concentrate, you can continue for the rest of the experiments to always capture on your three channels, but you may only have one channel that's of particular interest, in which case you can view just any one of those channels, two or three, so you can look at just one and not three, or just two, or just one and two, or look at them all together and in real time get an idea of the merge between channels one and two uh, to give you a merged image or if you want you can actually look at all three channels merged to give you a final image. So for the remainder of this experiment we're going to turn off the DIC channel. I'm going to capture an image with no DIC now and we're going to start addressing some of the artifacts that can occur when you're doing confocal imaging. One of the biggest problems with laser confocal imaging is due to the extreme intensity of the excitation light source and the variability of dyes. Dyes don't have, or fluorescent proteins for that matter, don't have any one particular emission wavelength. They have an emission peak, but they will emit in a wave of light. And what that means is is that sometimes you can have spectral overlap between your donor and your acceptor fluorophore. So there's a series of controls that you can put into place to give yourself some confidence that what you're seeing in two separate channels is in fact due to two separate signals and not signal leaking from one channel to another. So for example in this image one way we can get an idea if there's any contribution of the green light into the red channel is to take the exact same image except turn off the green laser. We'll press capture image and what we'll see is that there's nothing now coming from the green channel because that laser has been turned off and we can see if there's been any contribution into the red channel and we really don't see any. Okay. So the reciprocal experiment now, we know that no green light is bleeding into the red channel. We can get an idea if the red emitted light is bleeding into the green channel. And we can do this by turning off the red laser. And if we do that as capture image, we get a surprise. In that we're seeing, we're still seeing the red light with the red laser turned off. And that's because this dye is Alexa 555. And if you look carefully on the spectrum of the dyes, you will see that Alexa 555 can still be excited by the 488 laser line. And this is really telling us that we can actually do two channel imaging with only one laser line, which is one of the advantages of these fluorophores. But this is also telling us, as we can see in the merged image, that we have many intense regions of red, which absolutely no green pixels appear, and some intense regions of green where absolutely no red pixels appear. And that's telling us that even though we have one laser line exciting two fluorophores, the light that is coming off is in fact spectrally distinct. And that's helped by the use of the, of the, of the, of the gating. And if, and if we did have any uh, optical bleed between these two channels, we could adjust that by either increasing or decreasing the width of this, of this profile. But as we did these scans, even with the two laser lines, you have to consider that when two laser lines are turned on, both lasers are scanning across the surface of this image, sending all that light over to the PMTs that is then gated for uh, selecting your emission uh, profile. The more accurate way to do this is with what's called a sequential scan. So if we look over now on the left hand side, we'll see a button up here with SEQ and that's to show the sequential scan panel. So we can click that and a new panel will appear 
And now what we can do is we can do multi-channel scanning where instead of having both lasers or even three lasers on at the same time and spectrally getting distinct signals using the grating, we're in fact going to only scan with one laser and one gate and another laser and then another gate sequentially. And the way this is done is by setting up the channels independently. So we have uh, the sequential scan panel comes up. I prefer to use the uh, switch between frame setting. There is an option to switch between lines. And what that'll mean is with every line, the laser will switch color and scan again with a different color. We're going to do it between frames. So I'm going to select that radio button. And we're going to set our first setting, which is just the green, which means I'm going to turn off the red laser. And importantly, I'm going to turn off the red PMT and hit plus. Then for the second scan, I'm now going to turn off the green laser and the green PMT and turn on just the red laser and just the red PMT. Now in the case of this unusual fluorophore set, I could have decided to just leave that laser line on, but I'm going to choose the 561 laser and just that one PMT for the sake of, of demonstration. And I'm going to press uh, save. And this is going to give us a sequential scan setting and I'll, and I'll name that uh, and once you've saved the setting once you can just load it in the future uh, if you're redoing the same experiment again. Alright so now we're going to do an experiment where it's going to scan just one color and then change both the laser and the gate settings and the PMT to select only the second color. And that means we no longer press just capture image, we have to press the start button. And we'll see what occurs. We press start, we scan first the green, then we're going to switch our lasers and our PMTs, and then we're going to scan just the red. And that assures us that we have no crosstalk in our signals and we're going to get very discrete signals for each one of those fluorophores and you can see that in the merged image where we get very intense greens that have absolutely no red contribution and similarly very intense reds that have no green contribution and we know from this sample that, that this has to be true because we're looking at just mitochondria here and on the left we're looking at just actin filaments so that's how to do a proper two-channel or even three-channel uh, confocal multi-channel setting.